Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today we're checking out iQuest Coda V1. Now there's two versions of this. There's the loop version, which uh, runs it twice in a loop, twice as slow, but maybe twice as smart. We'll find out. And there's also the, the base instruct version. And this is a chart topping model according to the benchmarks. Like if you search for it, it says, it says right here, open code model beats Claude Sonnet, the best model in the world ever. And what is interesting is there was a bit of controversy all about it. So um, a couple of people did some investigations and they found out that the model itself was just going through the git commit history to get the better results. So they never sanctified it better. So if you go inside their um, history, you can see that originally it said it was chart topping with 81.1% but then they reduced down to 76.2. Now 76.2 is still insanely high. If we look at this screen grab over here, we can see that it is beating Kimi K2 and Quen3 Coda. If you guys don't know, I love Quen3 Coda. Like I've loved it for a long time. It's my friend. It's, it's a bit stupid, but I, I still like it. It's my, my, my friend. <laughs> I'm getting a bit too <laughs> loving these models. It's crazy. Yeah. Better than chat GBT 5.1. Yo, you're going to have to put out a 5.2, 5.3. Generally chart topping, even though there was a bit of controversy with this test. So we'll see how good it is. We're going to be running it locally. We're going to be running it agentically via Visual Studio Code, GitHub Copilot. And uh, we'll be running both versions. And if you go on the website, what is cool is they do have some demonstrations of the quality you can get. Like, look at this, a 3D solar system, and you can change the speed, the orbits. They've given you the prompt. This is the prompt, I think, that you can use. I don't know which version they used, if it was the loop version or the instruct. I guess we'll try it out, see what happens. So this is the kind of quality you can get. And what's good about this model is that it is a dense model, which means it's 40 billion parameters and that is it. So it's not going to use, it's not like one of those massive models, Kimi K2s that requires a terabyte of memory and it only uses like 30 or 40 billion parameters. This one is just 40, 40. So we'll see how it performs over there. Of course, because it is 40 billion parameters, it will run not as fast as other models, but in their stats, they do say, that they have smaller versions of this model coming out. So potentially the agentic ones, the 7 billion parameter ones, 40 million parameter ones, those ones can be doing the agent creating files, all that kind of nonsense. And the bigger one, if it is smart, we're gonna find out that could be doing the hard knowledge stuff. So I'm gonna jump straight in. I'm gonna be using the instruct Q6 version. I find Q6 works really, really well, but if it doesn't work well, I'm gonna bump it up and see how much we need to recreate those demonstrations that we saw online. So first up, I'm gonna do something super simple just to get a little base right. So I'll write a 2D snake game in Python and we'll get that going. We can see that it's going 19.2 tokens a second. And that is really, really good because when I run Quen Free Coder, the 480B version, which uses less active parameters than this one, that one runs around 18 or less tokens a second. So we're printing out the code. We'll see if it does do a 2D snake game. We'll judge it based on if it runs or if there's any errors and how good the quality is. So we've hit a thousand tokens now at 18.5 tokens a second. So that's what you should be expecting speed wise. So we are done. We've hit around 3,700 tokens. Just telling me how to run the game. We're going to need a prerequisite. That's PY game installed. And we've got in total 18.39 tokens a second. And we used up around 42 GBB bytes, GB bytes, GG Hadid bytes. We use 42 GBB bytes in total. So if you've got a 64 gigabyte system, you can run this situation over here. So that's really good. And in total, it took around 200 seconds, which is considering we made 3,800 tokens and it should be smarter than Kimi K2. That is fast. So let's see if it runs and we can see, boom, we got a basic demonstration of a snake game on the screen. So it's running. Obviously the graphics are very, very basic, but my prompt was very, very basic as well. What happens if we crash? Boom, we lost. Can this expand? Okay, its user interface wasn't the smartest. You can see that it's got a nice font, but it's not in the screen. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch a server. So I'll click on server over here and it started up actually. And I'll make sure our Llama is enabled. And I'm also going to give it unrestricted API response lengths. So it's just going to do as massive response as it wants. And then I'm going to jump into Visual Studio Code. And I've set up Visual Studio Code over here. Inside settings, I've written down a llama and I've provided it the HTTP of the server. So I got that from in the connect page. This is my llama URL. So now that's set up, 
I've added in a model. So I clicked on Olama here. So I've made sure that iQuest was enabled. So if you go into Visual Studio by default, you get GitHub Copilot installed. So we set it up now. I'm going to click on the, the chat settings and I'm going to select agent. So not talking, not asking, not editing. I'm going to click on agent and I'm going to say, create a 2D game of Snake in a new file. Let's see if it understands that and makes the tool calls. So behind the scenes, Visual Studio Code has sent a massive 70,000 character situation over to the engine. And we can see that it's processing the prompt at the moment. So we've got a little progress bar here. I'm a bit manic about seeing a working dot, dot, dot. I have no idea what's going on. So I might make it like an overlay floating window so you can see what's going on in the background. But nonetheless, we can see that it's processing the prompt over here and as a preview, this is kind of like the massive file that it sent. And inside this file, it's got a bunch of tools. I think it gives it 30 different tools. So one, you can get the file path, create new file, 30 different tools for you to use inside Visual Studio Code that specifies up to the LLM to figure out. So we're processing that prompt. It's taking a little while just to process that 70,000 character prompt that it's given it. And the good thing about it is once it's in memory, the subsequent calls should be faster. Although my experience Visual Studio Code likes to spam you with massive, massive prompts. So that's why it runs a little bit slow, but maybe the, the smaller versions will run a lot faster. So we finished the prompt processing. We started getting output on our screen over here and you can see that straight away made a tool call and it says create file arguments. So it's going to call it snake underscore game dot py and content is now writing in the Python file inside. So basically this whole file that we created previously, it's going to be part of that tool call. So it's printing out right now. So we're just gonna have to wait a little bit for it to complete. And then hopefully Visual Studio will run that tool call and a file will appear on our screen somewhere. Now I'm not actually on the latest, latest version of Visual Studio Code. I'm not on the inside of preview or anything like that. My version is about a month or two old. And what happens is halfway through the tool call, Visual Studio Code just gives up printing out the progress. I think it's expecting tool calls to be smaller. I think they might have fixed it in the newer versions or if you go into the insider preview version, they've got a lot of improvements to agent calls. It's all new, this whole stuff that we're doing. But if you go inside the imprint application, you can still see that it is doing the remote generation. What I might do is I might actually add like an agent tab or something tab so you can actually see what's going on still, even if your agent application decides to not show you anymore. <laughs> and it looks like it's woken up and it should have Done. Look at that. We've made a snake game.py. This is all new stuff. You can see that's created it over here. It's working on the subsequent prompt. What happens with Visual Studio Code and GitHub Copilot? It creates the file and then it sends everything back for the LLM just to check it over one more time. So we can go into the task view here and it's processing another massive prompt. And that will give us a final analysis on what's been done. But in the meantime, while it's doing that, we can go ahead and hit the play button to see if it will run. So I've hit run over here and boom. We do have snake running and it's created that file and I'm going to, yep, I did it. Let's see if the end screen is just as bad and it actually crashed on this time around or it just closed down It gave up. So this was a slightly different generation to the one we made on our computer, but it's, it's all the bones are there for this to work. And when they release the smaller versions, agentically, it should work with tool calls. And this was um, a massive prompt Visual Studio gives it with 30 different tools it could have used. So some models I've played with, they get very confused, whereas this one seemed to pass the job and it made a snake game. So I'm back over here, just in vanilla inferences so we can actually see what's going on. But what I'm gonna do now is I wanna see if it will make this solar system prompt. I'm going to jump into my Mac Studio server and I'm going to enable batching, which allows us to run more than one prompt at the same time. So I'm going to get this prompt going, write a web page to show a realistic simulation of the solar system, see if that works. And I'll also, oh, that's nice. No thinking, just print out the code straight away. And I'll also grab one of his other demonstrations. So I'll see how it does. So as you can see, we've got both inferences happening at the same time, and we're going around 15 tokens a second each. So we've gone from just under 20 tokens a second to 30 tokens a second with two inferences happening at the same time. And what I'll do, since we're having fun with this, I'm actually going to throw in a third one, and I'm going to give it one of the hardest coding challenges that I've got with these LLMs. It's not super hard, but it's a, a regex challenge and only three models have passed this challenge before. Kimi K2 Thinking, GLM, 
and open solar actually passed just recently so those are the three models that have passed it everyone else has failed and this prompt is to do with how we filter out different quantizations when we're grabbing models off hugging face so when we start supporting ggufs or on the windows version we're already supporting ggufs there so it's got a regex situation where it currently doesn't work with gpt oss because it's got underscore one and in our regex currently we're looking only for a k and m or a zero so most of the models miss that out so we'll see how this one does this coming up with the answer it says it's got a fix it looks like it's it two k m zero so it's it's missed it but this was the instructor version we're going to run this same challenge with the loop version and see the performance differences so we're running three inferences now and we're still getting around 30 tokens a second in total so we've got 10.8 plus 10.8 plus 10.8 and that's three people running at the same time so if you've got like a small office or you've got a little family and you don't want people fighting over each other with these models you can run the batching situation to find out what goes on now, one thing it did actually do, even though it got this challenge incorrectly, it said a note on performance saying regex is actually slow. You should consider just doing it with basic, basic string functions. So that is probably potentially it might work. I need to double check the code. So that is a nice fallback, even though it was failed at understanding regex, it understood that regex is slow. So it kind of pushed you towards just using standard strings instead as a possible solution instead. Now you can see we're producing 5, 000, over 5,000 tokens per batch. So we've got two batches at 5,000 tokens. I'm going to jump into Activity Monitor at this stage just to find out how much memory we're actually using. And we've actually used 72 gigabytes of memory. And that's because we're running two large inferences at the same time. So if you are memory constrained, like we talked about a 64 gigabyte computer kind of constrained to get this model running, you probably don't want to use batching for this kind of stuff. This is only if you've got the, the bandwidth to do it. All right, so we finished one of our inferences. As you can see, now that that's finished, we're back at 16 plus tokens a second, making the 3D universe. The universe is being made. And uh, we've got 7,000 tokens here for this fluid dynamic situation. That is good. That is really nice. Oh, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. It worked. That was, that's, that's really nice. I, I was like, I was concerned it wouldn't be as good as this. I mean, maybe, maybe it's not. I don't know if I'm using the correct it does look beautiful it does look beautiful i don't know if i'm meant to be oh yeah they are moving away from me look so that that worked so i got high hopes now i was actually i thought you know you know maybe it had a super quant or maybe you need the looper version to get that demonstration but no it worked just out of the box now of course this might be just a memorized file that it's already got I'm giving it a chance because it's not as big as the bigger models, the Kimmy K2s and all that stuff. That's got a trillion parameters. This one's only got 40. So I gave it a chance and it, it knocked it out of the bat. So I'm happy with that. Oh, we are done. Almost 12,000 tokens. It might actually be 12,000 tokens in the end. Currently, we're cruising around 15.7 tokens per second. It's telling us the ending results. 11,867 tokens for the universe. Sounds appropriate, it's a lot. So you've got all of this file. Let's just check out the entropy just to see if it was confused about anything. It looks like this is all mainly boilerplates. What happens is every single token that's being produced by LLM, there's always probabilities. So for example, here, it wasn't sure if it was gonna say mouse or planet or planets. Generally, it looks like it's mostly boilerplate code with only a little bit of deviation. I mean, that it wasn't sure if it was gonna do a new line or say and. And look, wow, it did it. It did it. It did the it did the exact same example that you saw on the website. Well, maybe not exactly the same, but obviously there's variations depending on where you run it, depending on the seed you choose. But generally, it looks just as beautiful as I don't know about these controls. Oh look, you can zoom in and zoom out via the mouse somehow. It's very, very spectacular, this demonstration. It looks like I'm watching some sort of educational encyclopedia channel trying to learn about the world. So that's info panel. Oh, look at that. That's a very nice slide. Toggle labels, toggle orbits. I don't know if that's doing anything. Can't really tell, but the, the movement is very, very gorgeous. So regarding what it says it can do off the till on the samples that they said they can do, that worked really, really well. But it did fail the regex challenge. So I'm going to beef it up now. I'm going to jump into the looper version. And I'm going to run it again using the loop instruct version. So it's loading. It's going to load very, very fast because, again, it's, it's the same it's the same model, really. We'll just extra bits just to make sure it works when you run it through it twice via the layers. So now we're going at nine tokens a second. So previously we were going double that. No, it failed already. Look, 
QD plus and it's got KM zero and it says it's going to match underscore one. So K and an M and a zero isn't a one. So it's failed already. Let's see the entropy if it was confused about it. No, it wasn't confused about that. It was just printing out its code. I'm going to even go on the one that this, this bit here, was there any possibility where it might have said something else? No, it was stuck on saying KM. Now, interestingly enough, the looper version also, unlike, unlike the non looper version, it didn't provide that performance benefits of switching to standard string functions instead. So um, that's just something to consider. What I want to do now is I'm actually going to play with it. I want to see if I can push it, nudge it in the right direction to make sure it gets the right answer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy its response so far, and I'm going to delete its reply. I'm going to play this message again, except this time I'm using the control response option. And rather than having KM, I'm going to give it a backslash. I'm expecting it to go with backslash W or backslash D just to see if it has some sort of comprehension there. So yeah, it did it. I gave it, I, I pre-filled it with backslash and it went with backslash W and that will actually work because W counts for zero to nine and also A, B, C, D and all that stuff, K included. What's funny is it actually understood that it changed K M zero to backslash W, which is more flexible and will match any word or character. So it understands regex. It just wasn't able to apply it. And it's look, it says it will correctly match it this time. Now, will it actually include the case insensitivity? Oh, if you want to normalize case, you can add, oh, it just said you just change everything to uppercase and go from there. So that way the capital Q will work. So it did give you some options and it got the right answer when you shoved it <laughs> in the right direction and it was smart enough to pick that up. So even though it, it failed, you can, with a bit of tuning, you can control and get the right answers out of it eventually. All right, so that was a quick demonstration of iQuest Coda V1 and iQuest Coda Loop. Loop should run smarter. I never managed to get it and I didn't need to do it because this was just such an amazing demonstration that it is. And this was just the V1 coda, this sample. And we also ran the fluid dynamic sample. That one ran well. We inferenced that on our own, on our own computers. We also ran it agentically via Visual Studio Code and it did make a snake game in Python. So we all ran there. So overall, I think it's great that they're thinking of low RAM use because not have, I'm a bit spot here. I've got a max studio with half a terabyte of memory, so I can run the MOE models. I love the MOE models. They're really, really good. And you can make them denser. There's a, a new mixture of extra experts button that I've added that allows you to double and triple the amount of experts that's thrown out of problem. But for people with lower RAM, having these models is great. And I'm looking forward to seeing how the 14 billion and 7 billion parameter models also run. Let me know what you guys think of iQuest Coda. Hope you guys found this video useful and enjoyed the show. Now, Mr. Agent, put this on the App Store and make me tons of money. It's working on it.